Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And you can reach Tim, folks, every trading day at Ord. Dot, no, Ord-Oracle.com. That's Ord-Oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's happening, brother? Well, thanks for having me on again. So, do you get my charts? I have your charts, man. We're grinding higher. I got them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to keep going, so no hurry here. But I, I put this chart out at uh, the bottom, of the, the chart number one, the bottom window. This is just a uh, this is a weekly chart, and it goes back to I don't know 2018, whatever it is. Okay. But it goes back several years, and um, what I want to point out is uh, it, it really works good at, at finding where the tops are. It's, okay. It okay. doesn't work so well on a daily, but it does work really well on a weekly. And what happens, what you got to look for is the market's going up, making higher highs on the SPX on the weekly time frame. The SPX VIX ratio will make lower highs. And that's your key that some sort of a high is being approached. And uh, in the pink areas um, are the times where the SPs made higher highs and the SPX VIX ratio made lower highs. I see. And right now, um, you know, if you go over to the right window here, we're pretty much not showing any divergence at all. That's that blue area I got yes. outlined. The right. market kind of went down over the last couple of weeks, and so did the uh, SPX VIX ratio. What's important here, say, uh, say over the next week or two or whatever, the SPs go up and make some new highs, and that ratio – doesn't now that'd be your warning that uh, uh, some sort of a high is being approached. That's pretty cool, up. man. Yeah, uh, I do a little bit of study of seasonality. I'm not great at it. Okay, uh, you can only. But anyhow, starting, I think July 27th to October 27th uh, is a time of, of 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 all the seasonal periods during the year. That's the weakest period. I see. Uh, so okay, that's three months period. So. Yes, say we do rally into end of uh, September, and you're noticing that you know the SPs are hitting new highs, and the SPX VIX ratio is not. Uh, and plus, you got seasonality up top of that, then you're probably heading for trouble. Uh, how big a trouble? You really don't know. You know, it could be just a sideways move. Um, I think this market uh, will end a lot higher than it is right now by year end. Uh, but there's a three-month period we're heading right into here. You know, it's about a month away or there thereabouts. That could cause some trouble. So, but I really don't see any, you know, since this is a weekly chart, I really don't see any trouble right now because there's really no divergence going on uh, with the VIX. Right. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking we're okay there. Uh, flip next next to the chart. Yeah, well, I, I can tell you too, Tim, you know, uh, I feel like we've had gifts from the trading gods. You know, I mean, I, I do a lot of intraday trading. And <laughs> this morning, you know, before and what I'm talking about specifically is I, I think I told you they have these options now that expire in one day and I trade them every day. And so I was so happy okay. when, <laughs> when the futures went down before the 930 bell hit because I says, oh, here we go. Thank you, trading gods. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, okay. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I know how that works. So, yeah, it's okay. pretty good. So we go so, to the next shot, right? All right. Next chart. Uh, this is – so you got the bigger picture. It looks okay. It's just like nothing super divergence going on. So that doesn't say the market has to go up or down. But it does give you a kind of clear view of that, like there's no big divergence going on. So you look at the smaller picture. This is a daily chart of the SPYs. And what I did over the last couple of weeks, uh, all those blue numbers there are basically the trend closes. And I've got a couple of tick closes in there Yes. also. Uh, panic is actually fuel for the market. And the more panic you can find, the more fuel the market has to rally higher. So ideally, you want a lot of panic in the market to really get a rally going. And so I measure panic with the trend. You know, the trend, anything above 1.2 on a close is considered a panic reading. And the higher that number is, the more panic there is in the market. And the more days of panic reading you get, the more energy that market has or fuel it has to rally. Uh, so I listed all those days 
uh, going back over the last couple of weeks, there's about, um, yeah, the markets consolidate for, but, you know, well, we're still kind of in a consolidation, I guess. We really haven't busted out of here. But over the last probably 10 days, we had basically seven days or thereabouts or maybe six days of panic reading on the close. No, I can see so that, the, La- particularly last week, Tim, right? That was a big read, yeah. man. 1.6, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.6, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yesterday we had 1.24, and we had a 487 down tick reading, uh, you know, and that's an update. So, yeah, right. You know, people were selling into it. Now, now uh, folks, the did you, did, Tim, can you just I'm, say that? Listen to this, folks. Can you just say that one more time? Because this is really cool. Just the part that you're yeah. talking the 1.2. Well, yes, yeah, yesterday the market was up, and we had a trend close of 1.24 showing panic. And we had 487 down tick reading. Right. You know, right. That that's an update. Right. So they were selling into the rally. You know, yes. we're true. We're going into a July 4th holiday. And people are probably worried, you know, trying to get out of the market before, you know, the holiday, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but there's panic in the market. You know, the bottom window there is the five-day average. And we hit right on the money, uh, 1.4 here, I think, um, let's say Thursday. So it would be like Monday or, or Friday of last week. And the two-day has been up around that 1.5 for a couple of different uh, ticks there. So we got quite a bit of energy. My point is we got quite a bit of energy to drive this market higher. Right. So if we're already having panic on an extremely modest decline, you know, if you do a Fibonacci relationship, which I forgot to do on this chart, you know, we're, we're probably at a 31.82, you know, or less retracement of that rally that started back in, in May. Yeah. Uh, so we had a very shallow retracement. Panic came right in, right off that top. So the market – really can't go down uh you know it may go sideways here but you know you already got enough energy to drive this market higher and there's so, no doubt uh, you know what and, and it's been plenty of times that you know i've been bearish beyond belief but because we've been doing this so long it's really hard to be bearish folks around july 4th i'm telling you man <laughs> because yeah. for some reason man they love driving the market on july 4th they just you know what i mean it's like okay you know it's well actually there's a statistic on that uh this year uh i forgot how that statistic went but there's 87 percent chance i think it is july uh, 4th or will be or uh, the day before july 4th will be an update i know we got a, 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 a a commercial coming here. Yeah, I'll just, be, just stay right there for a second. We're going to come right back. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow's up 246. Nasdaq's down 19. S&Ps are up 13. We're talking about our man, Mr. Tim Ord. We are talking markets. You can always get hold of Tim, too, folks, at ord-oracle.com. So I have the second chart up here, Tim. All right. Um, let me go back to it. Um Oh, do you want me to go to the third? You know, you, you, no, we couldn't have. I, I guess we're pretty much done with this. I just wanted to show, point out the panic, and I broke down the, yes. the trend closes and some tick closes. And, okay, cool. And so we got everything. Normally, you know, if you're coming down, you don't get panic until you're getting near low. I know. And we didn't really go get down much, and we already got panic. So this is some sort of a minor wave here, and this minor wave is done. So, um uh, maybe uh, the, the bombs are in. You know, I also have a note there that says up six days in a row going to that uh, week ago last Thursday, and that predict the market will be higher within uh, five days, 83% of the time. Well, we're, you know, it's been over probably five, six days now, and we're still not higher. But once you go up, you know, five, six days in a row, market shows a lot of momentum, and momentum uh, – along with panic, kind of rules what the market does. Yes. So there's nothing that I can see that's bearish on the market, plus the VIX is staying real low, way below minus 17. So there's nothing wrong at the market right now. Uh, that may change in a month, but I think we're pretty clear until we start uh, heading into that seasonal week period, end of July. Uh, sure. And that, you know, October, November, or not October, but uh, – August, September, and maybe part of October could be kind of yeah, you right. Know, less than desirable up for the title. Yeah, <laughs> so, good trading though. So, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So you know, something I'm watching for because everybody's kind of looking for a, a top here. You know, at least the people I'm talking to, I'm thinking I don't, I don't see it. At least not yet. So, right. I don't know. But, no. We, we hey, listen. The, you know, the bottom three. line is, is that if you just look at, you know, between the Fed raising rates, between the amount of action upside already. Um, you know, we both know you can go higher than a lot, lot longer than people actually think. That's that's yeah. if I learned anything, man, that's the reality. So, right now, the next yeah, one, you, let's let's get our heads wrapped around this, because this has been, you know, because, you know, there was an ABC structure down, Tim, and the gold contract. It was 1902 and we hit 1900 today. So it's kind of intriguing here. Now we're going to be talking right. gold, folks. All right. I, yeah, I think I showed this chart last week. I can't remember. But anyhow, the bottom window is what's uh, doing the signal. And the bottom window is a 50-day average. So uh, that's, what, two and a half months of trading? Yes. 50, you know, we got about 21 days. So that'd be four, you know, about, that's right. about yep. two and a half months of trading is a 50-day average. And so I took the 50-day average up-down volume advanced decline indicator percent. And I did a chart and went back as far as I could go, which is um, like about 1910 or 2010 there. Right. And every time this one got below minus 20, uh, you were setting at a low or close to a low. And the thing didn't really go up. It just went sideways. And we hit that uh, minus 20. We're actually still pretty close to it. Uh, today we're at 1975 or 19. Yeah, 75, wherever that number is. And, but over the last week or so, we've been pretty much below minus 20. And GDX so far hasn't done squat. I mean, uh, what this does, it says you probably hit a low in this vicinity, and you're probably going to flip sideways. So that's what that chart says. Uh, it, it could go up, but it doesn't necessarily. What I'm watching is on the next page. Okay. So... The 50-day average hit a low, so you're in the vicinity of some sort of a low. Yeah. So now you got, you got okay, when, when does the rally come? Well, this is the uh, the bottom one of the 18-day 18, 18 average. So it's not the 50-day average. is a lot shorter. It's, it's about a week and a half. Okay. Or 18 days. No, that's a, that's a little less than a month. But anyhow, I did a bunch of different time-moving averages, and anyhow, the 18-day seems to work well, uh, the best. And the next, you know, the, the bottom window is the advanced line, 18-day average. The next window up from the bottom is the 18-day average up-down volume. When both of those are above minus 10, which is in the blue area, yes. you got a rally. When both of them are below uh, minus 10, which is the, the pink area, you're in a decline. Right. So if you notice, we the up-down volume, which is second uh, – window up from the bottom, it went below uh, minus 10 back in April and uh, kind of just flipped sideways. It didn't really go down with the market. It just went sideways. And the uh, advanced decline, which is the bottom window, never fell below minus 10 until late May. And right now, both of them are below minus 10. Well, the rally will start when both those indicators close above minus 10. And we're sitting around about minus 15, 18 area right now. But what, what's kind of unusual, both these indicators are going sideways, and they've been going, instead of going down with the market, they have pretty much flipped sideways here. Yes. Which is kind of rare. So to me, that's kind of underlying strength. So I'm thinking with the 50-day average telling the market's at a low, uh, the rally hasn't started yet, but uh, I think it could be a, a decent rally. Because I think there's some energy in the market here, because these are are kind of not really drifting down with the market. They're kind of holding steady right below minus ten on both of them. Yeah, you know so, it's interesting, Tim. When we look at the GDX there, yeah, I'll put this chart just over here for a second so the folks can see it. Um, you know, because the so the the GDX right now, right? We got down to a price point of twenty eight seventy six today. Now that's coming right into the March 13th sign of strength as we came off that last bottom, which is really cool. And that that had 56 million shares traded. 
And we, we, we rejected okay. that lower price today with 14 million. Now you're up 30 cents. So. Okay, you're, you're going back to first part of March off that bottom. I am. And it, 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 right. it, it literally went right it. into yep. it. It went into this bar. There was two different bars off that bottom that had big strength. And the bar that it's into today that it rejected had, uh, you know, um, they had 50, hold it. It had 56 million shares. Never mind. I said, yeah, 56 million shares versus 14 today. And you can see right. the way this is set up. You know, bottom line is that even though the gold contract was down big, this ended up rejecting everything. So it's intriguing, you know, in itself. Right. Yeah. There's another thing, too, about uh, uh, GDX and gold. The market uh, uh, seasonality wise is going to enter a week period end of July. Gold, on the other hand, is ending a strong seasonal period of mid-July all the way into October. So what would kind of be interesting, the, the market may take a rest, the equity market may take a rest, and the gold market may perform, you know, in that time frame. Okay. So, yep. uh, so we'll have to wait and see. I had some other indicators that gave a target, you know, in August, September, a high around 44. I'm thinking that still could be a... a, a Still could be on the table. We'll have to wait and see, though. Yeah. Hey, so, we'll just wait right there. We'll do another segment. Stay right there, folks. Tim right. and I are coming right back. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now. Give me one second here. Yeah. Dow Industrials trading up to 218. Nasdaq's down 18. S&Ps are up 11. Don't forget about the Target all sale, folks. It's right on the front page of TFNN. It's the 4th of July Target sale. Stay right there. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 224. NASDAQ is uh, down 21. S&P is uh, up 11. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord, and we are talking gold. You know what's amazing, Tim, is that they always make <laughs> gold uh, a hard buy, don't they? I mean, it, yeah. it, it's great when you get it, yeah. but it always seems to be a hard buy. Yeah, that is, that's why I, it, it is with to me, when I go into trade and stuff, if I'm not really kind of worried about something, it can turn out ugly. Uh, usually the best trades I've made when I was just, you know, scaring the poop out of me to put that trade in. Exactly. You know, but it, it takes practice to really buy in when everybody's screaming and yelling and, yep. and you know, stuff's hitting the fan. Uh, a lot of times those turn out to be the best trades. And nothing like we had that last low, you know, uh, Right, this, you know, the the one we're coming off of. Yes. Um, you know, I actually bought the day before the low, um, and the market gapped down. I held through that gap, and then the gap, uh, the gap down, and the market rallied back, and that was pretty much the low. And I sold two days later because <laughs> I don't know. Somebody called me up, told me something, and it scared me so much. I sold, and then I had to buy back about I don't know. It seemed like a point or a percent and a half higher so it was it was too but anyhow that's that's how life works but and that's how you gold works panic, folks, you don't have a low that's so. right because those gold equities folks which tim is talking about we almost went up a hundred percent just to, if you're if you know the folks in the gold market know that i mean those equities just took off like a rocket ship i mean an eco uh, uh anglo gold that thing went from you know, seventeen dollars up to twenty-eight with nonstop, just boom. And then, of course, we now we're down to twenty-one again. But you know, that's how they trade, man. That's how they trade. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's pretty wicked. But remember, back in the two thousand, yes. Uh, you know, when we were, uh, you know, talking about it, or we were actually doing it. You know, the market just went straight up and went straight up for years. It did. You know, that market didn't peak out in uh, what two thousand twelve, I think it was. Yeah. And, and those was, stocks, folks, ride. started at 30 and 40 cents. That was a trip. <laughs> that was a real trip. Oh, Remember, yeah. what was a, a BGO, right? <laughs> yeah, BGO. Just, I think it started out as a quarter. Yep. And, um, yep. and uh, yeah, 15 bucks or something. Yep, or, exactly. Or thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at one point I had 60,000 shares of that. Yeah. No, um, listen, do you remember how many calls we used to get, man? Oh, my God. That was, like, an, unbelievable. It really was. Yeah. So when we're looking at this, okay, so the, the chart that I have, one second, let me make sure. I have, this is the fourth chart, right? Is that, is that the one? Second. Yeah, the fourth chart is that. This is a short-term view of GDX. Right, right. Okay, cool. Right, right, right. So I, I took the, uh, 
a GDX up down volume and I took the GDX uh, advanced decline both on an 18 day average. So this has a good, what do you call it? It has a good, um, it shows all the energies necessary to read what this stock will do as far right. as GDX is concerned. So, um, so as right now, it's uh, on a short term basis, it's still in the bearish camp, not real bearish, but yeah. Uh, but the 50 day average is on a buy signal, or you know, so yep. it said it's top. So I'm just waiting for this uh, short term stuff to kick in, and I, I'm thinking that's going to kick in probably in July, probably first part of July, I think, and, um, and that could rally possibly in the October time frame. So we'll see how it goes. But if you looked at um, go back to chart three. Okay. Which is the bigger picture again. Yes. See, those signals, when they come, um, they're not, you know, you get about one a year. Right. And over the last three years, you got, so you're not looking for a one or two month rally here. You're probably looking for a multi month lease rally because last time we got one was uh, mid 2022. You know, if you look where that last signal was. Yes. And that signal lasted, um, um, I don't know, what, a good year. Yep, exactly. Yeah, we're, exactly. Yeah, you know, or close to a year. And so th this next one, so I'm, I'm thinking on a, on a bigger time scale, this we, we could ride this signal for a while, I'll put it that way. There'll be some corrections along the way, but the major part of the low uh, is probably being, making right in this vicinity. And, and what does happen, folks, is that all this time goes quicker than you think. You know, I remember the, uh, the, the, uh, the first time, uh, I don't know, it was, I think it was you, actually, that said, oh, yeah, we're going to do this for like two or three months. And I'm looking, I'm saying, i got to wait two or three months, man? What are, we, what are you talking about here, man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And, and I get it now, of course, okay? But, you know, it's always intriguing that patience is the name of the game. I mean, it absolutely is, right? Yeah, yeah, you, you got to kind of wait it out. You got to trust your signals, and and the hard part of this game is is trying to find the right, I guess, technical analysis. Yeah, uh, that you can rely on. Right, that you can stick your neck out and and not get your neck chopped off. Right, you know, and right. And over the years, I I kind of got lucky back in what well, when we first met. You know, I was kind of doing that tick thing yes. on the on the clothes or in the day. I was kind of mastering that. Right. And so I just started going off to everybody else. When everybody else was panicking, I was buying that uh, right. stuff. And I kind of honed that down and, and kind of expanded from there. Yeah. So, yeah. but. Uh, Pretty but cool, man. It's, 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 been, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a learning experience. I'm still learning, you know. And that's what, hey, that's what keeps us all young, man. That's what's so cool about yeah. the market. That's, you know, uh, that is what's so cool about the market, no doubt. So hey, where where are you off to on July fourth? What are you doing? Oh, actually, uh, uh, going back to the in laws in, in Colorado. So Don and I are nice uh, leaving um, Saturday morning, and that'll be fun. And we're coming back uh, uh, actually Fourth of July. So okay, uh, uh, that's where I'm going. Where are you going? Where the, well, actually, we're right out my window. We have the Vinoy. So <laughs> it's it's you know. You haven't seen this office yet, but we're literally, I'm, I'm literally looking at the water right now. So there's a beautiful hotel wow. there. We're all hanging down the hotel for the weekend. So that day, the fireworks are there. You know, I got the, a couple boats down there, so we'll have some fun. Um, I got Tommy coming in with the grandchildren. So, you know, we're going to have some fun here. And, and of course, we oh, have dear. four days off, which makes it, like, insane. Do you know what I mean? So Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to come down there and see you pretty you know, coming you, you, You're going to have to, man. We're going to have some fun. Let's let's do that. Let's definitely do that, man. You know, no doubt. Yeah. Got to love it. So, so, listen, what is the weather like where you are right now? Uh, it's, it's not too bad. Um, it's probably 85. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not as nice. Uh, usually July gets, uh, gets sultry and gets uh, sticky. And, yeah, like everywhere. And, yeah, right. Yeah, it gets, but right now it's, it's, it's 85, but it's not really humidity here yet. So that runs through July to August. Uh, September starts cooling down again. Okay. It's pretty nice, 85 again, but the humidity's gone. 
La Larry, oh, so Larry lives in Tucson. And folks, this is an update for, for you for Larry too. Larry had a, Larry took a plane out of there today. It was 115 degrees and his allergies are killing him. So he's going up to the White Mountains <laughs> and he's gonna be in New Hampshire visiting all you folks in New Hampshire. He's going to the White Mountains for the, right now until July 4th so he can get rid of the, can you imagine 115 degrees? Oh my God. No, I can't, I no. can't. Tim, you oh. have a great 4th of July, a safe one. Look forward to speaking to you next week. All right, thank you. Thanks. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.